Hi, this is Tracy from Step by Step Painting and I have this super fun vintage camper painting to teach to you today. This is on a 16 inch by 20 inch canvas with acrylic paints. I would like to preface this video by saying that it actually took me quite a long time to do this. Not because it was hard, it's a very simple, I wouldn't say simple, it's a very easy painting, but there's a lot of details in it. Um, the first part of the video is going to go over how to do the drawing part of it and essentially you can just paint the drawing in like you're painting a coloring book which makes this a, a fun painting that you can do with your kids or if you are an absolute beginner. So the reason why I'm telling you this is because the video actually goes in a little bit of a fast motion feel free to hit the pause button if you're doing this along as you're watching the video. Okay, let's get started. So I have my traceable printed out and I'm gonna decide where to put it. I'm gonna put it directly in the middle and about three fingers from the bottom. Graphite paper to transfer and I'm gonna trace all of it. This video is gonna fast forward to the part where I am done tracing. Feel free to pause at this point. I have a ruler and I am doing the horizon line. The horizon line is lined up to the lines that are on the camper or you can measure four and a half inches from the bottom. Okay, next I'm going to do my mountains and the mountain line is actually lined up with the string lights. So I'm going to draw a bunch of triangular zigzags. I'm actually going to start right here. So that's where the string light is. And I'm going to do this triangle line. Okay. And another diagonal line. So on the other side, about right here, triangle line. And then I'm going to fit another triangular mountain shape right there. The tips of the mountains are only slightly higher than the camper. Okay. Next, I have, this is a Harkins Theater cup, so I'm going to trace a circle. You can trace any kind of circle that you find around the house. And there's a picture of what it looks like. Okay, now let's start the painting. I have a number six brush and a number one inch flat brush. The number six round brush is going to paint the moon and the big flat brush is going to paint the sky. Those are my paint colors. I'm going to start by mixing titanium white with cadmium yellow medium. So mix about equal amounts, actually a little bit more white than yellow to make a light yellow color. And then I'm going to paint the moon. So I'm going to paint just like I'm coloring in a coloring book, do rounded strokes try to get in as close as possible to your drawing line. Okay, rinse my brush. I'm going to switch to that big flat brush. So I'm going to paint the entire sky phthalo blue. I'm going to start at the moon and Instead of left and right strokes, I'm going to go in a circle to kind of cut this edge, the edge of the circle in. So I'm going to paint in circle strokes to begin with. Eventually, I want my strokes to go left and right because I don't want to do the circle thing all throughout the sky. If you need to switch to a smaller, say a quarter inch flat brush, you can do that to help you cut in closer to that circle. Okay, as I get closer to those mountain lines, I'm gonna cut in with my flat brush to do some of the zigzag shape. So cutting in just like that and fill it in with left and right strokes. Okay, cut in my camper and then I'm gonna fill it in with left and right strokes. So basically the, le the rest of the sky is gonna be filled in with left and right phthalo blue strokes. 
easy peasy. And again, feel free to hit the pause button. Um, as I warned, this video is going a little bit faster than some of my other videos do. This was just so I can fit it in all under about 45 minutes instead of three hours. <laughs> okay, Mars Black. So I had Thalo Blue still in my brush and I'm gonna lo load some Mars Black onto my brush. I'm gonna give some dark tones in this corner of the sky right here because it is nighttime. So I'm gonna blend in the black just a little bit and I'm painting kind of diagonally in here and I'm gonna lightly, slightly blend that in with the blue. I'm not really looking for perfection here. Okay, and then a little bit of black over here in this corner. Again, this step is optional. Next, I'm going to actually mix white with phthalo blue to paint some moon beams around the moon. We've got the fire pit going, there's lots of smoke in the sky. So equal parts, phthalo blue and white, and lightly, I suppose you can kind of call this dry brush, because I'm very lightly painting these light blue lines around the moon, and I'm letting the paint run dry. So I'm not adding any more pigment to my brush. I'm just letting it get dry as I work my way out. And add a little bit more white closer to the moon here. Okay, and then a little bit indication of some clouds behind these mountains, very, very lightly. You could hardly see this part right here. Okay, next I'm gonna paint some stars. I have this very tiny number zero round brush and twist it to get a tip on this brush. So I'm twisting it into the paint. And then I'm gonna paint the standard star. So here and there, not too many. Um, keep in mind that if you're gonna do a quote in the sky to leave a big space left for your lettering. And then of course, if you're not gonna do lettering, you could do more stars. So I didn't do too many for this painting, which is unusual. I didn't even bring my splatter paint brush out for this. It's going for something different. Then I did a few little dots here and there after I did my stars. So give a little bit of variety. So instead of stars, just do little dots, little clusters of dots. And then I wanna wait for this to dry. Okay, I'm actually gonna use my finger to fill it in. So I'm gonna dip my finger in yellow and white. I'm gonna stamp my finger on all of these stars and I'm gonna smear it out. It's way better than coloring those stars back in with yellow and it gives it a nice glow. So I did that to all the stars, stamped and smeared out. Now we're gonna do the mountains. I'm gonna use neutral gray and titanium white on my palette. I'm gonna to switch to a quarter inch flat brush. Okay, I'm gonna start by cutting in with this neutral gray. So the gray is on the tip of my brush and I'm just cutting in these sharp lines. 
and then in the middle I'm going to drag the paint down. So I did the lines and I'm going to drag my paint down as I work in the middle. So when I'm grabbing I'm using both the sides and the wider part of the brush. So I'm kind of turning it as I go. You'll get a thinner line if you use the side and a thicker line if you use the wide part of the brush. I'll kind of experiment with that a little bit but I'm using both. Drag your paint down. Go almost all the way down. So we have that horizon line there. You don't want to go all the way to the horizon line. You want to go almost all the way to the horizon line. So keep working your way down using the same kind of stroke. Don't worry about the dimension of the mountain yet. We'll do that a little bit with white just want to get this area filled in as much as possible. Um, if you need to paint a little bit over the camper that's fine, just don't lose your drawing. Okay, I am not going to rinse my brush. I'm going to dip the tip of it in white. So I'm going to dip in white and I'm actually going to drag it out. So it's almost like I'm blending the gray with the white a little bit and I'm dragging it out so there's not so much white on the tip of my brush. I'm going to start on the far left mountain. I'm going to do the same thing but just on the tip. I'm using the side of the brush. So I'm dragging from the right to the left. You see how that provides dimension because it overlaps? So I'm using the tip and right now I'm using the wider part to kind of blend it back in. Okay, I'm going to do it again. So drag the white out so there's not much white. Start on the right side of the mountain, drag the paint down from the right to the left. And it's okay if you run out of white on the left part because um, it makes the mountain look brighter on the right than the left side anyway. Okay, load your brush again with the white, drag the white paint out and start from the right and work your way to the left. All right, I have a round brush and I'm gonna mix light green permanent with equal parts of that gray. I'm gonna paint another mountain kind of hill structure right um, above that horizon line to fill in that space right there. So with this round brush, this large round brush, I painted a large wiggly line and I'm going to fill it in. Solid color left and right. This gives some more dimension in our landscape so the mountains are not right on the horizon line. There's some more dimension. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Squiggly line and fill it in. Next, take a deep breath because this part is a little bit tricky. On my palette, I have titanium white, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, and also Mars black. So light brown, medium brown, dark brown, white, and black. If you find that this part is too tricky, you can always just paint the ground the dark brown color. My camper has light underneath it. So the area right under the camper, there's string lights, there's a fire going, it's bright. So we want my ground to be bright right here and get darker as it goes out. I've decided to paint in an oval shape. Kind of like if the camper is a moon and I'm painting rings around the moon to get from light to dark if you've ever done that kind of sky painting um, kind of the same concept so I started with white and I grabbed raw sienna so the raw sienna is very light I'm painting in an oval sort of shape it's kind of kind of look like there's a an oblong rug 
underneath the camper but it's not it's dirt okay so this whole area is a light brown and as I work my way out I'm going to add darker browns so I have the pure form of raw sienna and I'm going to work my way out and then I'm going to grab the burnt sienna which is the medium brown so I went from light to medium and then I'm going to go to dark to black so keep working your way out blending those browns outwards okay this burnt umber is going to take up a lot of the space you're going to need more burnt umber dark brown than any of the other browns I did mention that if you want to simplify this you can just paint the ground a solid color I would do a darker color to give it contrast I would do the dark umber color if you were just gonna paint the ground one solid color okay my strokes are still kind of going in that oval shape but they're going off the canvas here some more burnt umber that's my darkest brown and I'm going to work my way out all the way to the far left, blending those browns together. And then right here, way back in the distance, it goes pretty straight, horizontal. Again, way back in the distance, you want to make sure that it's cutting that horizon line, so a nice straight line. I'm going to go back and lightly blend some of the colors in. This darker brown kind of took over, so I'm going to grab more of the raw sienna, the lighter brown, and add that to the lighter part and blend it back into the darker brown so that my light area kind of blends in better over here okay next I'm gonna do some Mars black so on my palette I'm not rinsing my brush I'm gonna drag the excess paint out on my palette and then grab Mars black and on the far right and the far left side of our ground is the darkest and also the furthest part where the horizon line is. So that straight part way in the back. And as you add the black into your brown, it should blend together. So wet on wet blending here. My browns are not dry. The black is blending on the canvas. Make sure also at this point that you have a nice straight or almost straight horizon line. It should be very defined at this point. And then grab whatever colors you need. I'm just grabbing some of my other lighter browns to blend them in a little bit more. And a little bit more of the darker brown in some areas. So kind of do touch-ups where you feel you need to have touch-ups done to get those browns to blend together a little bit more. Okay, done with the ground next we are going to have fun and paint our camper in i'm using a quarter inch flat brush and i'm using bright aqua green mixed with white so if you notice i grabbed both the colors and i'm getting them to blend together on the canvas i do that when i'm doing the when i have a shape to color in I like to grab both of the colors. Usually I grab a color in white. It gives the um, the object more, in it makes it more interesting to look at. It's not one solid color. I'm trying to get more white towards the top of the, count, the camper 
and then the lower part is going to be more of the pure aqua color. You can customize your colors too. You can add designs to your camper. There's a lot of different fun things that you can do with this part. Make sure that you're cutting in very close with that object. It should be very defined. Um, you might have to go back in and fill in some of your landscape, maybe the gray mountain or the, the green hill or some of the brown, if you have little gaps left. Okay, rinsing my brush, then I'm going to switch to medium magenta for the bottom part of the camper and the door. I'm going to do the door first, and the door is a solid coat of medium magenta. Then for the other pink area, the lower pink area, I actually grabbed white. I grabbed a lot of white to mix with media, medium magenta to get the lighter pink color. Okay, the trim is actually solid white and I switched to a smaller round brush because this is a smaller area that I have to fill in. For the window, I mixed a lot of white with a little bit of bright aqua green to get that light turquoise color. And then I went back with a small round brush and just the titanium white to make the glare, the white glare that you see in the window. The trim around the window is gray.
and I did the hitch gray too. And next I'll demonstrate how I did the tire. I switched back to that larger round brush and I started in the middle with the lighter gray. This is actually gray mixed with some white and then more of the pure color gray and then the tire is black. So I did my lightest color first and then I worked outwards. And then as you can see, I mixed gray with some white to do this trim area above the tire. I don't know the term for this area, so I apologize. This is light gray. Again, obviously you can customize your colors. You don't have to copy the colors that I chose. You can choose your own. Okay. I'm going to do the string of my lights. I have that tiny zero brush and I'm twisting it to get a point on my brush. Twisting it on the palette helps the tip of your bristles get to a point. And I'm going to paint two lines. You probably can see the lines that you still that you drew in the beginning. If you can't, just kind of estimate. And then we need to wait for this black to dry before we can do the lights. So since you already have the brush, you can go back and do some outlining. So I outlined the middle part of the window here. And I did the door handle, doorknob. And some of the bottom right here I outlined. And then I'm going to outline the inner part of the door. If you are doing this step, just make sure that your lines are very thin. By this point, your string light line should be dry. We're gonna do some more finger painting. So I'm gonna dip my finger in white and cadmium yellow medium. And I'm actually gonna use my finger to paint these lights. So take your index finger and paint little circles with your fingers for the lights. And then notice the placement, they're right, they're, they're touching the string, but they're like right below it. And then um, inconsistency between how much yellow and how much white you get on the finger is helpful. The point is to make it look kind of blurry and see-through so I can see that turquoise underneath the white. Next, this is where it's kind of so cool. Um, I grabbed that zero brush again and I'm gonna use pure white to paint a little dot right there where that string is touching the light. So that represents the actual light bulb and the yellow that we did with our fingers is, well, the whole thing is the light bulb, but the yellow is the brightness of the light. If that makes sense, it gives a really cool effect. Okay, totally fun. We got our string lights on our camper now. 
All right, let's paint some trees. So I'm using a quarter inch flat brush. I mixed white with light green permanent. And I'm gonna decide the placement of the tree. This is my tallest tree in the painting and it's way above the mountain line. And I'm gonna use my brush to kind of sketch out the tree. So my first under layer of this pine tree is light green permanent mixed with white. And I'm just painting, sketching the under layer and I'm gonna work my way up adding some more branches into the tree, grabbing more of that same color to kind of fill it in. Notice how I'm doing the strokes, I'm dragging them. So the flat brush, I'm dragging each of the branch kind of down in a diagonal formation. So when I get my base shape in for the tree, I'm gonna to switch to a dark green permanent. So this is a darker green, same brush. And I'm gonna start from the bottom and I'm gonna drag each of these branches down using the tip of the brush, the, the side part of the bristles. So I'm dragging down and I'm working my way up. You'll get, it'll make it look like it has layers by working from the bottom to the top. Okay, so I'm gonna drag some more outwards. And the trunk of the tree is black mixed with gray. Add some more of the lighter colors. So I'll always start at the bottom and work your way up, dragging each of the branches. Okay, decide on the placement of your next tree. Kind of think about where the mountains are if you don't want to make the mountains disappear, but kind of want to make it between the mountains. I made this tree shorter. So again, start with your lightest color. So it's, it's almost like you're blocking out an area where this tree is going to be with this light green color. Form the shape with your brush and then with your darker color, start from the bottom and then work your way up, dragging the paint color down to create that kind of layer. And I'm kind of switching with this one. I alternated between the light and the dark green as I worked my way up. And this tree is kind of slanted. There are a million different ways that you can do pine trees. I just did it this way. Add some more darker colors in there. If you have a, a way that you're comfortable with, with you, the way that you do pine trees, by all means you can do it that way. And then the trunk is black and gray. Let's go on for more of a simple, I didn't want to render these trees more realistic. Okay, I'm going to do another tree on the side. So I um, start with the lighter color to block out my area. This tree is next to the big tree, but it is shorter. So I want to do some overlapping to give some um, dimension in my painting. So block out your area with the lighter color first to form the shape of your tree. I always form the shape of my tree by starting from the top to the bottom. Um, but if you feel more comfortable starting from the bottom to the top, you can do that. You can also get a piece of chalk and draw in your trees first. If um, you're not comfortable with just going and doing it right away, um, draw it with the, the chalk. It's erasable and you can go back and fix it. And then I get my darker color, work from the bottom upwards. And I'm gonna do one more tree over here on the right. I think I'll do another kind of tall tree.
So I'm going to add a little bit of the black here and there, some darker areas in the tree, not too much, just a little bit. This is a darker part of the painting. There's not a lot of light hitting this area. So that's my basic demonstration on simple pine trees. I'm going to touch up some of these trunks here and there and then I'm going to move on to the campfire. So with the campfire you will need a piece of chalk because this is a little bit um, kind of daunting. I'm going to draw my fire first with the chalk. So I'm going to kind of just sketch out where I want the flame part to be and then a little X on the bottom for the firewood. Titanium white is the first layer that I'm going to use for my fire. I'm using a small um, number two, I believe it's a number two round brush. It's a number two or number one, just a small round brush. And then I'm going to add in cadmium yellow. So I did the white first and then I'm going to paint another layer of cadmium yellow over the white. These are loose strokes. They're kind of fluid, loose strokes. And I'm starting each stroke from the bottom and I'm stroking upwards. I grabbed cadmium red light hue, which is an orange looking color, and I'm going to add that in there. And notice how I'm not making that orange salt. So um, right up there, the little little flames, the little getaway flames that give some indication of more realism. <laughs> We're not going for realism here. We're just trying to make it look like fire at this point. Um, and then the red, the red, the darker parts kind of more in the middle so the red's not covering completely i still see some of the color below and then i'm going to go in and grab any of my white yellow orange or red just to kind of touch it up um, the more you work it, the more it's going to end up blending in and being one color. Um, you want the fluid stroke to show, um, but not mix all the way together. So what I'm going to do next is the firewood. I'm going to use Mars Black and Burnt Umber and I actually grabbed both of the colors and I'm going to paint this X part right here. So I'm going to kind of define the shape of my firewood. Dip the tip of the round brush into the white and start painting some of the texture onto the wood. And then I actually blended a lighter color of the brown to give um, some lighter brown hues into the texture of the wood. Next, I'm defining the circle that is at the edge of the piece of firewood. And then part of the wood that ended up overlapping some of the fire, I'm going to go back and add some more um, darker hues of the red. Next, we're going to paint some of the white smoke that is coming up through the fire. This was actually my most favorite part of the painting, kind of that magic touch that it gives. Um, so with the white, it's a very fluid stroke. I'm holding this brush very loosely and it's not even a solid stroke of white. It, um, it's almost like a dash line, a faded line. Um, if it helps to hold your brush like 
closer to the far tip of it to make it kind of fluid. I'm not holding it closer to the bristle. I'm holding it kind of in the middle of the handle. Um, also, if you want to water the white down, you can do that. Adding my signature because I'm finished. And actually, I'm not finished. I'm going to go back and do the, the gold Sharpie lettering. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that too. Okay, so with a gold Sharpie, you're going to, well, if you want to, this is optional, but I thought it was fun. Um, let's camp under the stars. If you want to do the letters, but you're not comfortable with your writing yet, you can do it with chalk first and then write over the chalk and then erase it. So that's an option too. Okay, this video is about to finish up. Thank you for watching this fun camper tutorial. Um, I can't wait to see yours too. Thanks, goodbye. <laughs>